Welcome to this podcast where I'll be discussing the pre-lab setup for the, for the synthesis lab that we're going to be doing. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> what we see here is that you're going to need a computer, you're going to need a logger or a lab pro setup, uh, and then this, uh, the circling in black doesn't really work, but uh, this is a colorimeter. A meter, something that measures uh, color. And so a colorimeter is a fancy, sorry, is not a fancy spectro photometer. Photometer. Uh, the color image that we have uh, can vary in three lambda, three wavelengths of light. Here, spectrophotometers can uh, have almost infinite uh, uh, sources of light there. So we're going to be measuring, shooting different colors of light here with a color emitter, and we can measure uh, the absorbance and or the uh, transmittance of a... Uh, specific wavelength by a pigment, and more on this later. All right, what this colorimeter is doing here. So we have a colorimeter hooked up to the logger, the Lab Pro, which is hooked up to the computer, and you can see on the computer there we're measuring absorbance. Um, so that's part of the setup. The other part of the setup involves uh, down here a light source uh, and involves a heat sink. And this heat sink is supposed to allow just the light to travel through, and then, but not the temperature. So any heat that's coming off of that lamp there will be absorbed by the water that's in the heat sink. So here's just a little um, uh, aquarium and that is filled with water. And then these are our cuvettes or our samples. And then this is just a box that is there uh, as because I left it there. And <clears throat> so this is the these are the two setups that we have here. So let's talk first about what is going to go into the cuvettes. Right? So I will do this ahead of time. I will take uh, spinach and I will blend up some spinach in a uh, sugar and make a sugar suspension. Right? Sugar and spinach suspension and then I'll filter it. And so we're going to take whatever's left in the bottom here and this will be our uh, chloroplast suspension. So the blending here breaks open the cells, right? and this is the chloroplast suspension. Not a solution. The uh, chloroplasts don't go into solution. They're not dissolved, but they are suspended in the, in the, the liquid there. So we're going to have then two samples of this. Uh, one will be uh, unboiled, and then I will boil another sample. Right? So we'll have unboiled uh, chloroplasts and then uh, boiled chloroplasts. Even though they look the same, they're going to be different. So one will be unboiled, one will be boiled. We also have something called DPIP, and DPIP is blue, but when it is uh, reduced, it turns to colorless. So DPIP is a dye, and again, in its oxidized form, it's blue in color, and in its reduced form, it's colorless. So this dye right, will accept electrons. And when it does, it turns from blue to colorless. The more electrons it's, it has accepted, the more colorless it goes. Right? <clears throat> so we're going to use this, this dye here as an indicator of how much photosynthesis is occurring here. And since it's accepting electrons, what do we know about uh, photosynthesis and and uh, electrons is that in the light dependent reactions uh, we get electrons flowing and we get electrons reducing NADP plus so in the experiment here we're going to use this dye this DPIP as a replacement for as a substitute for NADP so the more light dependent reactions that are going the more NADP would be reduced the more light re the light uh, the more light-dependent reactions are going, the more dye DPIP would be reduced, and we'll be able to tell the, the color change here going from blue to colorless. One other thing that we're going to need is a phosphate buffer. 
and you'll know it's the phosphate buffer because it'll be labeled uh, phosphate buffer. And that's also going to go into the cuvettes as per a recipe that's in the uh, pre-lab, which I'll show you in just a minute. Here is the colorimeter, and here are the cuvettes that we're going to use. So all that, the, the chloroplast suspension, some water, some buffer, some DPIP, uh, may or may not go into uh, these cuvettes. Right? And so a cuvette is a little tiny plastic thing, and there are two sides to the cuvette uh, that you see here. This side is uh, not ridged, right? and then this side is ridged here. And so uh, these are turned 90 degrees from one another. So these are two of the exact same cuvettes. So the non-ridged side and then the ridged side here. The cuvettes, your samples go in the cuvettes, and you may have a, a lid on the top of them there. Your samples go into the cuvette, and then those cuvettes are going to go into the colorimeter. Right? Here is the colorimeter uh, from a top view. And so <coughs> we see here that there's the knob here off, and then the different uh, wavelengths of light there. And as you read the pre-lab, it'll tell you exactly when to, wh what to switch the knob to, et cetera. So this is the cover, and this is the cover, and it is closed, right? And here's the cover open. And so this is where your cuvette would go, right? Now you'll see that there's a white line right here. When you put the cuvette into the colorimeter, you want to make sure that the ridged sides are here. So the ridged sides go there, and then the non-ridged sides uh, go right here because the light is in the box down here. Then there's a little bit of there's a little hole here, and there's a detector, right? Detector over here, and light's going to shine through from the from the colorimeter. It's going to go through your sample and then uh, strike the detector on the other side. So if it, if the ridges are in the way, then light can't pass through there. Okay. <coughs> So a little bit more about the colorimeter here. We had seen this slide earlier on, uh, on a light um, screencast when we were talking about how, how we can measure how much of a specific wavelength is going to be absorbed and or transmitted by a sample. So if we have a sample that's here and we know a specific wavelength, right, so we're going to have a selected wavelength of light and we're going to pass that wavelength of light through the sample. So the question is, how much light of that specific wavelength uh, is absorbed and or transmitted by our sample? This is the question that we're trying to, trying to figure out. Right? So in the case of the lab, uh, we are not going to use blue light, right? so we're going to pretend that this is now red. Right? So we're going to use red of 535 nanometers. So we're going to set our colorimeter to 535 nanometers, right? and we're going to get red light shining. Right? And our sample is, well, the question is, how much red light, how much red light is absorbed or transmitted by our sample. Well, what's our sample going to be? Well, let's go talk about what the samples are going to be. So with this colorimeter, we can measure how much light, how much of that 535 nanometers is absorbed or transmitted. So. <coughs> here are our cuvettes. We're going to have five cuvettes, and then here's the recipe in the table here below about what goes into each of the cuvettes. So these cuvettes here have lids on them, uh, and we have, I think we have enough lids for every group to have some. If your group does not have a lid, it's not the end of the world. Uh, see me, and we can dig some up. But uh, in each of the cuvettes is going to go uh, phosphate buffer. Uh, each of the cuvettes is going to get some uh, water, right, distilled water there. Uh, not every single cuvette is going to get DPIP, so notice here that uh, cuvette number one does not get any of the DPIP. Uh, chloroplasts, uh, unboiled chloroplasts go in, in, the, uh, in cuvettes one, two, and three. The boiled chloroplasts go in cuvette uh, four only, so make sure that you take a look there and see what goes in each one. If you've not been listening, listen right now.
when you're filling these cuvettes, I want you to put the DPIP in last. And you need to put the DPIP in right before you're ready to go. So the last thing that to, to go in is the DPIP because, because if you have DPIP and chloroplasts, right, as soon as that happens, right, you're going to start reducing the DPIP. And if you remember, if we reduce DPIP, what color does it go? Well, it's going to go from blue to colorless. And you don't want that to happen. You, we want to be monitoring. We want to monitor this color change. We want to monitor this color change from blue to colorless. If you put the DPIP and the chloroplast together, the reaction starts happening immediately. The reduction of that DPIP starts happening immediately, whether you're ready to measure it or not. Right? So get all your cuvettes set up, right? and right before you're ready to go, right, you add the DPIP into them. Right? So we can talk about that a little bit more in class as you practice getting it set up. Uh, one of the cuvettes, uh, cuvette number two, is going to be in the dark right, here. And so the way we do that is we're going to put it into a little foil house. Um, now, this is foil here. And you have to be able to get the cuvette uh, in and out of this little sleeve. So you need to make this foil sleeve and make sure you can get that cuvette in and out. And then this is uh, the lid or the cover that's going to go over the top of that. So this is what you see, the, the whole cuvette wrapped up with the, on, on the right here. So here is the lid or the cover on there, and I kind of just squeezed it on there. And then when you get ready to measure this, to stick this cuvette into the colorimeter, uh, you have to take off the lid, take it out of the sleeve, and put the cuvette into the colorimeter. Do not try to jam that whole thing with the foil into the colorimeter. Right. So here's what <coughs> your samples are going to look like uh, when you are all set. So here's cuvette number one, here's cuvette number two, number three, number four, and number five. So this is what they should look like. And you're going to set those up. Uh, and at time zero, you're going to, you're going to uh, take cuvette number one, hold the lid on, invert it, put it into the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put it there. Number two, right, you put the DPIP in. <coughs> put the DPIP in, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put the cover back on, and put it in the foil, put it there. Cuvette number three, put your DPIP in, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, place it here. Cuvette number four, put your DPIP in, put the cover on, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put it back. Cuvette number five, the DPIP, uh, put your DPIP in, there's no chloroplast here in cuvette five. Uh, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, and then start your, start your timer. Right? So you're then going to, at time zero, you're going to be measuring the absorbance and the transmittance of your sample, or by your sample, of uh, 535 nanometers. So you're going to take two readings for each one, so at time zero. And then at time, uh, I think it's either two minutes or time three minutes. I forget exactly what it, what it says in there. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Invert cuvette number one, put it in the colorimeter, take it out. I'm sorry, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put it, be, put it here. Take cuvette two out of the foil completely, put it in the, in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put it back here into the foil and the cover back on. Number three, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put it back. Cuvette number four, uh, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take it out. Sorry, take a reading, take it out, put it back. Cuvette number five, invert it, put it in the colorimeter, take a reading, take it out, put it back here, and then you're ready to go and wait another time period. Where are you putting these in the interim time? You're putting them right here uh, behind, between the box and your heat sink. So we're going to have light shining through here. So this is a light source. And shining on this, and we're able then to measure 
the rates of photosynthesis. So the question for you is, what is the unit on the rate? So what's going to go here and what's going to go there? So our rate of photosynthesis, how are we going to measure that? So just one final note here. So we're going to be able to see the absorbance here very, very easily. Uh, and this is the default setting. So you'll record this value. But then also right up here, uh, it'll say the transmittance. It'll give you a percent transmittance as well. So uh, you're going to be looking right here as well as this. And this is what gets recorded uh, in, your, in your table there. Okay. So uh, a lot of that went probably pretty quickly. But I uh, go back, read through the uh, pre-lab setup, uh, look back through here. And if there are questions, please come to class uh, ready to practice the setup. Okay.